Prior to this video, I made a very successful tutorial talking about media pipe pose and OO track as a solution for low budget full body tracking. Since the release of that video, I've built myself a set of slime VR trackers, and I'm here to talk about them and maybe help you figure out if slime VR trackers are right for you. So, number one. Uh, what are slime VR trackers? Uh, slime VR trackers, which are also called slimes, are an open source full body tracking solution. Uh, they are more expensive than media pipe posts, considering that's free. However, they are cheaper than other methods of traditional full body tracking. Uh, for example, via rotunda trackers. And although you can order slime trackers from a crowdfunding page, it is generally cheaper and faster to build your own. Currently, I have a set of five slime trackers that I built myself, um, and I'm ordering the parts for an additional tracker, however, currently I just use my cell phone. They're housed in 3D printed cases, and they attach to my legs, thighs, torso, using Velcro straps. I actually used a design from the community called the Hyperion case and modified it to better fit my needs. Generally speaking, uh, the tracking quality of slimes is pretty comparable to Vive trackers or Tundra trackers if you configure everything properly. However, sometimes slime trackers can struggle with quick movement, so if you're a dancer, you might want to look into that or do a little bit more research to see which solution's right for you. Unlike Vive trackers, however, slime trackers cannot be occluded, and what that basically means is if something were to get in the way between the lighthouse and the tracker, it doesn't affect slimes because they don't actually use any sort of external sensors. And that's cool because it means you can use a blanket or whatever and not lose tracking. Slime trackers work over Wi-Fi. They each have a little microcontroller in them that sends their rotations to the server on your computer, and then it uses these rotations to estimate the positions of your body parts. Unfortunately, slime trackers cannot track things that are not a part of the human body because they don't actually know where they are in space. They only know their rotation. Currently, there are 11 places you could put a slime tracker if you wanted to, and that includes your waist or your hip, your chest, one for each of your thighs, one for each calf, one for each foot, and if you really wanted to, you could do your elbows as well. So here are some questions you should ask yourself before you commit to slime trackers. Number one, do you have soldering ability and equipment? Uh, although I did not have any previous electronic soldering experience, I had a mentor who was willing to help me and lend me equipment. If you know how to solder or you know someone who does, this is definitely a very doable project even for beginners. The second question to ask yourself is what is your budget for both time and money? If you need full body tracking right now, uh, slimes are not the best option at the time of making this video. Pre-made slimes, which you can order from the crowd supply, will not be shipping for several months. And if you want to build your own slimes, you'll have to order parts from AliExpress, which may take anywhere from two weeks to a month to arrive. And also, none of that includes any of the time that you'll be spending making the trackers yourself. Regarding money, six slimes, which is how many you need to get tracking comparable with five trackers, ended up costing me about $70 to $80. And that cost includes all of the electronics and even the straps. The most expensive part by far to order were the batteries. However, keep in mind, this cost does not include any soldering equipment, so if you need that, you might have an additional higher cost. However, slimes are currently the cheapest full body tracking option, excluding webcam-based trackers such as the Kinect, April Tag, or Media Pipe Pose. The next cheapest option would be Shiftall's Haratora X, which costs about $270 for similar tracking quality to slimes. Haratora X is currently on pre-order, so there's no guarantee as to when that will be coming back. Other than that, your options are limited to Vive or Tundra trackers, uh, one of which costs more than a whole set of DIY slimes. If you have the money, absolutely go for it. However, it's not really a viable option for Quest users because they require base stations. And finally, the last thing that you should note about slimes is that they are not an option that works right out of the box. Uh, there will be lots of tweaking, configuring, and even possible breakages. I know I had a couple. I'm reordering parts right now. Um, personally, I enjoyed this a lot because it gave me a challenge and something to work on, but if you don't like this type of problem solving, then I would not recommend that you commit to slime trackers. So, you've decided you want to build your own slimes. Where do you start? Number one, do you have a PC and a semi-stable Wi-Fi connection? Currently, slimes and actually all other methods of full body tracking require a PC. However, not all methods of full body tracking require Wi-Fi. Slimes do. Slimes run over your Wi-Fi network. If your PC runs on Ethernet, that is alright. You just have to make sure that your slimes are connected to the same network as your PC. If you have a slow network or you operate on a hotspot, slimes might not be for you. 
Currently, I've got some Wi-Fi issues, and it definitely shows in the quality of the tracking. You'll get lots of stutters, lots of stoppages if your Wi-Fi goes down, so I would not recommend Slimes if you're not sure about your Wi-Fi connection. Number two, make sure you can source soldering equipment and have a basic idea of how to solder. Slimes are not a difficult soldering project by any means, however, it would be great if you had a friend who knows how to solder electronics on hand if you have any questions. Here's a list of terms that you'll encounter a lot if you're trying to do soldering research online, and I'd suggest you get familiar with those before you try and build slimes. Number three, so you're certain you want to build slimes. Now you have to source the parts on AliExpress using the documentation. It would be best if you use the exact recommendations from the documentation, however, if you find something that's cheaper or will arrive faster, make sure to verify that they actually will work with slimes. I used some slightly different parts than what is listed in the documentation, and I will link them all in the description of the video. While you are out there ordering the parts on AliExpress, here are some things that I'd recommend that you order that aren't necesarily mentioned in the docs. I would get a pair of crimpers and crimps, which basically means you can connect the battery to your slime without having to solder it. It's basically stapling two wires together, except how you're supposed to do it. Uh, I didn't feel comfortable soldering a pretty highly volatile battery to my slime, so that's what I did. And I would also recommend getting some heat shrink tubing to put over any exposed wires as an extra safety precaution. Finally, once your parts arrive, you need to plan out your design. Obviously, you have to solder everything together according to the schematics and the documentations. However, how you stack the parts or line them up is up to you. Planning your design out from the start is very important because it will narrow down which case is right for you for your slime. Keep in mind that a more compact layout will be a lot more difficult to solder, but a lot easier to fit into a case. However, a larger slime will be a lot easier to solder, but it'll take up a lot more space on your body. If you make all five or six of your slimes as similar as possible, it will make everything a lot easier later. Consistency is absolutely key. And if you don't do anything else, make sure that your IMU, which is the little thing that tracks the rotations, is in the same orientation in each and every slime. That'll make setting up the software a lot easier in the future. Hopefully, now you should know if slime trackers are the right full body tracking solution for you. I will be making a video about assembly and setting up the firmware in the future, however, for the time being, I have linked some tutorials that should work. For now though, I'm just going to play some demo footage so you can understand what the SlimeVR tracking quality actually looks like. <laughs>